Alright, during the break, I've gone ahead and added a few textures to our scene. It's not something very difficult to do at all. Um, in here, in the, uh, in the project view, I've created a new folder called Textures, and I just brought in a few images. These images are from the fantastic site cgtextures.com, and um, it has a lot of textures available for free, and you can distribute them with your game. However, you can't redistribute the textures as is, um, and so in the example files for this game, I won't be able to actually um, include these texture files. But Finding them on the site yourself is very easy to do, and applying them to the game is very simple. All you have to do is the materials you already have, for example, the, um, the brick. This is the same material I had before, um, except over here I've clicked the select button to choose a texture. And I chose the brick texture and applied it thusly. And if we zoom in over on the right, you can see that the brick texture actually has quite a bit going on in here. Um, and it's a shame that it really doesn't show up all that well over here. I suspect for this sort of 2D game, hand-drawn brick textures would actually go a lot better than the sort of photograph of a brick that I'm using. I've also obviously taken the, the top row of bricks here and just offset them by, uh, by sliding them over one, one unit to the left just to make them look a little bit more brick-like. Um, and yeah, for the brick itself, that's, um, that's all there is to say about that, just apply the texture. There's a, in the background, the background image, it's slightly different. No, I'm lying. I, uh, I think I had fiddled around with using a self-illuminating texture for the background to make it nice and bright, uh, but then I decided that it wasn't really necessary. I did make my light brighter, that uh, the directional light. I bumped it up from a 0.5 to a 0.8 to give it more of a daylight feel. And for the paddle, I'm actually not happy with this texture at all. I think what I'm going to do at some point is go look for something that might be a, a kind of a look like girder, maybe, um, and a nice tileable girder texture and, and do something with that. Uh, but for now, I just have this sort of metal plating type texture, and you can see the main color here. If I were to switch the main color to white, you could see the actual texture of the object. But what I did is I added a little bit of green just to make it look like a more active player element. And that's it. The, uh, the ball and the walls still have no texture whatsoever and that seems perfectly fine. And if we hit play, you can see the game still plays uh, pretty much exactly like it should. Oh, apparently I clicked the Maximize on Play button since the last time I did a video. Um, and, that's, and that's quite nice to get a good visual feel for the game, but um, I usually don't do that if I'm actively debugging. Um, and you can toggle, if you right click on the tab, you can toggle the Maximize at any point, even if you didn't do that. Like if I stopped, hit this, now the game is playing, and I can right click and Maximize, and there we have it. The next thing we're going to do is going to be to set up the game to be in a little bit of a better state for actually tracking things like lives and respawning and a few other things. And what we're going to do is we're going to start the ball so that it's not it's not going to start in motion like this. It's going to start like most of these types of games where it starts latched on to your paddle and then you can move it around, position it for the first shot, and then let it go. And we're going to do that by actually removing the ball from play itself. Let me minimize all this. So right now the ball is simply an object instance in our hierarchy. The first thing we want to do is we actually want to make sure that it's a prefab. So I'm going to put that over here. So now I've got a ball prefab. And then I'm actually going to delete the ball from the game hierarchy altogether. So now I don't have a ball at all. And we're going to instantiate this ball via programming instead of having it pre-placed in the level. Something very easy to do. I'm going to do it as part of the paddle script. The paddle is probably going to be one of the, the biggest more active uh, player interactions in the game. In fact, it may be the only object that cares about what the player is telling you to do. Um, so our motion, this is our, this is our left-right motion, is handled simply by inputting our axis into our translate. Uh, actually, before I get to that, sorry. In our start, this is where we're, where we're gonna wanna spawn the ball. And there's, um, well, there's a few different ways that we can kind of go about it. Probably the best way is to do this. We're gonna create a public game object and we have to spell it correctly, I guess I could use tab completion. And I'm going to call this uh, ball prefab, like so. I'm going to save this. Now, because it's a public object, it will show up in my inspector on my paddle. You can see here, ball prefab. So I'm going to drag the ball prefab over to there. So now we've got one. Now in my start script, I am going to spawn or instantiate the new ball. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to farm this out to a function because that is probably a lot better. Um, I'm going to call it spawn ball. <clears throat> because we're going to want to call this for things like uh, uh, when, the, when you lose a ball and the player starts with an extra life, then we'll be calling spawn ball more than once. So we'll just call it here. And yeah, you can use tab to auto complete that. Very nice little 
feature. So uh, the first thing we should probably do is check to make sure we actually have a ball prefab, um, just just to freak out on people and, and put in a nice error to the programmer who forgot to attach one to the other. And we could just do something like this. If ball prefab equals null, then we could do something like debug.log a dummy you forgot to link to the ball prefab in the inspector and then maybe we'll just return immediately and let's just see what that does just to make sure so if i go and my paddle yeah all right let me uh just break this connection and flip over the console so now if we hit play yep we get our error which is great and then if we go and reconnect the ball over here and go back to the console one more time and hit play. You can see no error message this time because it's not null. So we have a copy of the ball prefab, but of course we actually want to spawn the ball at this point. And so to do that, we are going to use the instantiate command, uh, which just requires that we at least feed it the prefab, but we're probably going to use this variation here where we can give it a position and initial rotation. Not that the rotation is terribly important for the ball object because it doesn't actually have a relevant facing in any way whatsoever. So ball prefab and then we need some sort of position vector um let's just you know what we'll create sort of a, a couple of placeholders here these are going to be variables we're going to instantiate vector three uh, ball position is equal to something and quaternion which is the type of object that holds rotation information uh quaternion math is a, a little bit complex for my ability, um, but it is what you need to properly track rotations. And once you get used to working with such an odd word, you're going to be perfectly fine. Uh, ball rotation equals, and you know what, this one we know for a fact, we're just going to feed it some sort of dummy um, rotation. Oh, it doesn't have, oh yeah, just an identity rotation is going to be perfectly fine. But the ball position is going to be what? Well, really, we want it to start at our own position, so that would be... Um, this is our, our, our paddles transform dot position. So we want it to be centered on us, except we want it to be slightly higher. Um, which I'm feeling like I'm maybe going about this not quite the ideal optimal way, but I'm going to go ahead and fake it anyway. So we're going to set it, say, one unit higher than the paddle and see what happens if we do that. Can't help but feel that it's not ideal, but let's see. Well, it appeared after delay. Let's, uh, our initial ball is not going to have any motion whatsoever anymore. So it'll just stay wherever it spawns. There we are. That looks roughly right. I guess uh, one full unit is maybe too much. I guess half a unit. Let's try that. And obviously it's actually going to be, ideally, this should be half the thickness of my paddle and half the radius of the ball. But we're going to eyeball it and it's going to be fine. It's actually too little. So we'll just stick it at that 0.75 and call that good. All right. So now we have the ball that shows up in place, which is great, but of course it needs to do two more things. One, we need the ball to come with us. And the other thing is we need to be able to launch the ball. Let's deal with the second problem first. We want to be able to launch the ball. We're going to do that in the update and we're simply going to do 